flag. Many of you I know, and I'm sure there are many that I do not know, Roger has asked that I conduct this meeting. It really isn't important whether we know each other personally because we have so many things in common because of our chosen occupation. Those of us who farm and till the soil have the things in common which are vital to our standard of living and our livelihood. You know, everybody stands for something. They stand for a cause, they take a stand on a position or on an issue. And we have the responsibility to let that stand which we represent be known. The custom in too many societies is that we are complacent and willing to let society shape our lives, when in fact we ought to shape society. And this organization has chosen to give leadership to people, and in this meeting, of course, we're dealing and talking directly to the young farmers and ranchers, those who will follow in our footsteps and protect this industry if we assist them in that cause. And so here tonight, you're going to see uh, members of the field staff department who are second generation uh, NFO members. Their fathers, their dads were involved in NFO over the years in the early days of the organization and they as sons of that first movement now are leading in this effort to organize the young farmers and ranchers so that this organization as it was established years ago was established to be uh, perpetuated and go on and on. It was never designed that those of us, as we get less hair and a uh, few gray strands in our head, that this organization should die. The ultimate plan was that it would be fostered, protected, and go on from this point forward, and so then it takes generation after generation to cause this to happen. And we're willing to assist in putting it together and we need those of you in your age bracket to pick up the torch and carry it forward. And the days will come when you will be in position of leadership in causing it to realize its full potential. So I'm going to now ask the field staff department to pass out the, the uh, working copies that they're going to have you work with. Was there anything else, gentlemen? Okay. Go ahead, fellows. They're going to be passing out an inventory form, and it'll take just a few moments while they do that. And uh, while they're doing it, I'm going to give Kent and Bailey just about five minutes while they're passing out those forms. And the minute they've got them passed out, then we'll stop and work with them. Thank you. The few remarks that I'm going to convey to you this evening... I hope everybody listens to, even if they aren't a young farmer. Because all of us started at one time as a young farmer. We're here today and we are what we are today because of everything that has happened in NFO in the last 24 years. Coming down in the, through the last 24 years, we've come to this point and the thing that we've stressed so much in this convention is that we now have the structure, we have the capable expertise in our departments and in the people that now, that once some of them opposed us, but now they're willing, with us and willing to help us attain our goal. And as we've heard our leaders say, you can feel it, we're that close. But I think in talking with the people out in the halls and at the meetings, some of us are getting a bad feeling or read back from what some people are interpreting expertise. Some are saying, well, if we've got these people that are so capable and have all this experience and can do this for us, well, we're going to get it done. They say, these people have all the connections and they can do this and they can do that. And we're beginning to forget that probably the greatest expertise that we have within the National Farmers Organization 
is right out there on those country roads, everywhere in rural America, it has been told to us by people that have opposed us in the past, saying that our greatest strength in NFO was the fact that those in NFO were willing to go out and talk to their neighbors, eyeball to eyeball, explain NFO to them, and get them, get them to become involved. Some of us that are older think we don't need to do that any longer. The appeal that this organization has made in the last year and a half to young farmers is probably the single most prevalent reason that we are showing good, solid growth today. And if we can pass on to the young farmers, as well as re-still and rededicate within ourselves those of us that have been here longer, that we have to do more of that, we can get new leadership, a real surge from within our organization to attain and complete and reach the goal that we set out to attain 24 years ago. So let's look with respect and a cooperative spirit to all those people within our organization that have lended their expertise to us to be used. But now let's every one of us use the expertise the good Lord gave us to go and communicate with our neighbors and to build that people army to get this job done. Thank you. Before we have the Assistant Director Dan Graff instruct you on the inventory form, Walt Hackney, who is the Division uh, Director for the Slaughter Cattle Department, has uh, another appointment, and we'd like to, at this point, put him on just a little ahead of schedule. So, Walt, if you'd come up, please. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mark Rolfling asked me this afternoon if I would drop over this evening, and I was more than willing. The only thing that bothered me is he gave me five minutes to discuss the cattle program, and that's like uh, running a Indianapolis 500 in four and a half minutes. Uh, it's a little hard to discuss what we have to offer in the slaughter cattle division in this organization. As Kenton Bailey, so aptly put it, the emphasis, in my opinion, has been maybe too much on professionalism. Maybe the membership have become a little too self-reliant on someone else handling that physical chore. I think what I'm getting at is this. Had you attended the slaughter cattle meeting this afternoon, you would have found that the emphasis there was on national farmer organization members who had a desire to express themselves professionally. That was accomplished in about 10 months in a learning period. Every man that stood up there this afternoon was a member exactly like y'all are tonight and attended those young farmer meetings in Corning, Iowa last winter and extended themselves into our cattle program. I have had people the rest of this evening coming to me. I had practically no input in that meeting today, but I've had people coming to me today and saying to me that where were those people 15 years ago? Well, they were sitting where you're sitting right now. Their fathers were sitting where you're sitting right now, too. You have 
the marbles in your pocket to play the game. I don't personally believe we've got to bring industry in here to impress this organization no longer. I, being one of that industry, have got no need for them to impress you as to our rapport with them. This organization last week set an all-time historical high in marketing cows in the northern states. This organization this week set an all-time historical high in marketing cows. Again. Now, industry did not do that. Professionalism did not do that. Young farmers, energetic farmers, interested farmers, loyal members of this organization did that with a little guidance from those young farmers that chose to become better educated in the methods of marketing cattle. They are the ones that did that. All I did was take what they gave me, ask a price, and got it. And believe me, it was that simple. Now you have every tool to make your organization as unique as you expect it to be in the marketing of, I think, all products. But specifically, of course, in my case, in cattle, I think that you and your fathers have got so much potential, and I think that you and your fathers have got a personal obligation to each other and to your families and to your community to express, as these young men that stood up in my meeting today express themselves, but express it in terms of volume. That's all it takes. I've heard volume preached from the day I came here about 14 months ago. I didn't know if I necessarily believed it then. But you proved it to me last week. The annals of the USDA Marketing Service have your block of 1,500 cows last week, 1,200 cows this week, written down now as an all-time historical high in the pricing of cows, which, by the way, was 90 cents a pound. So all I have to offer is what you give me. All you can give me is what you have, the personal motivation to go out there and get. I do appeal for your help, but I think that then with it, next year when we arrive back at this place or at another place for a national convention, you're going to find that industry is secondary to you. You may have industry here, but it will be in the form of, a, of an appeal for your cooperation. Thank you very much. The theme of farm power has been carried throughout the convention, and the inventory form, Farm Power, Dan Graff, will instruct you on how to deal with it. Dan? Thank you, Devon. You know, as all of you know, and probably many of you were at a farm power meeting that was held August 3rd in Des Moines, we had some 10,000 farmers that were represented there that day, which is probably one of the largest representations of farm production ever assembled in one building. And I think that told us something, that farmers can and are going to unite. At that meeting, we came out with a farm power inventory, and I hope every one of you has got one out there tonight. We need to know in this organization where the production lies, where the commodities are, so that we can fulfill our contracts and our commitments and make cost of production plus a profit a reality. We've got a 16-county program out right now that's given us an opportunity to expand our contacts and increase in production going through the system. Success of this organization lies not in the numbers of members, 
but in the volumes of units or blocks of production going through this organization. We're going to go through and fill this thing out tonight. We're going to take it right from the top and complete it 100 percent. And I'm going to assure you, just as surely as you're sitting here tonight, that if you're not signed 100 percent, if we do not have 100 percent commitment, there will be a staff man at your door. We laid our necks on the line. We set a date, March 1st, to be moving day in this organization. We're shooting for 30 percent. We always have. Do you think we can make it? Yeah. All right, then let's do it. 100% of your production, where we've got the commodity programs available, is what it's going to take. So at this time, I'd like everyone to start. Hope you've all got pens there. I know you filled these out before. Let's do it one more time, because we're going to use them to your and my advantage. We want your complete name on that thing. Does everyone have one out there? Is there anybody that we missed? Dalton, could you get these people one out here? Ray? Fifth row back. Today's date, December 14th. Put your complete address on there, if it be Route 1, Route 2, or your box number, not just the town. Yes, sir. Hang on to it. We'll ask you to make a contact later for someone else that doesn't. We'll use it. Put your county on there and your state. Going on, the township you're in, your zip code. Telephone number we need with the area code, please. If you are or are not a member of this organization, please check one of the boxes, your age, an approximate dollar investment, because we want to talk about that, and we're going to go into that with the next speaker up here tonight, as far as the average investment of the producers in, these, in this country today. Number of livestock to be sold for slaughter. And we're going to start in January, February, and March. This is an estimated total yearly production. You should know how your cattle are going to grade. We want in that first box there, first quarter, the number of head of either prime, choice, good, any feeders, any cull cows, all livestock. Again, make this estimate come as close as you can and be as honest as you will with yourself. Right. Go through the hogs in the same manner and the sheep. Don't worry about totaling that up. We'll take care of that. You dairy producers, whether you be grade A, grade B, number of pounds per year, average number of cows you milk, and if you are under contract with processor or other organization at this time, we'd like to know the name, address, and your expiration date.
All grain producers have the commodity, total produce, and bushel. Any on contract for sale? And any on storage on the farm now or in commercial lot, commercial storage. You know, we took these farm power inventories out of that Des Moines meeting and went to work on them to see just how successful we could be. We had an area in the state of Minnesota that was somewhat vacant as far as a collection point. It was about 60 miles between facilities. We took six staff men up there, and I believe in a period of two weeks, going right off the printouts, because each and every one of these are fed into the computer and will be printed out quarterly, so that again we know where the production lies. We went into a four or five county area. We had a location, I believe it was an old market, that we could use. And in that period of two weeks, we set up in the neighborhood of 200 to 250 hogs per week on contract. We proved that these could be successful. And that's exactly what we're going to do with these tonight. When everyone is done with these, I want you all to pass them in towards the center of the aisle. We'll have one of the fellows come down to collect them. Let's do this as quickly as, as, quickly as we can because we've got some other speakers here tonight. And there's one other thing I'm going to ask. At the top of that, we're going to explain here in just a bit again a new structure we've got that's going to overlie and entwine with the 16 county regional program. I want to know if, e if any of you have been approached on this or, are, or have committed yourself to work. Just write yes or no at the top. And then would you be willing to work? Yes, sir. Contract for sale. Can everyone hear me back there? Big pardon. We've had some people, we've had some of the staff men come out and talk with some of you farmers, some younger farmers, as far as working a two county program that we're going to kick off here right after convention. If you have been contacted on it or are going to be willing to work under the program that Mark is going to go through, I need to know by writing either yes on the top or no, because we are looking for people. Contacts is going to be the key to this involvement. Well, okay, that's a good point, Glenn. Some of you have already been contacted. If you have, just put a yes up there or no if you are working or not. Thanks, Dan. I wonder how many of us run an annual cash flow statement. And as you borrow your monies, the lending agency insists that that happen. And too often as we run the statement at the end of the year, the red ink seems to carry through. But we want to run through one with you on an average condition, and we're going to ask Mark Rolfing to cover that with you, the cash flow, and also explain to you a new structure that's being introduced by the department. Mark. Thank you, Devon. I would like first to really express my deep appreciation to this organization for what I think is a tremendous attitude change toward youth. I think the age of the people in our department is a good example of how you, the young people, can grab hold of a tremendous organization and help lead it to its final victory. I couldn't be any more proud of this organization after what I've seen at this convention. Many of you probably 
have been in the main convention, have listened to Roger Slotick's report to the convention, and may have attended commodity meetings either Tuesday or today. Part of what I'll be talking about was covered in those meetings a bit. But please bear with me because there are some people that I don't think had the opportunity to attend those. In talking about cash flow, I think we should take a minute to understand a little bit about what brings the need for cash flow analyzation to come about. Last year, or in the year 1977, as a group of farmers, not young farmers, but farmers in general, we had a net farm income of $21.5 billion. Now that's a lot of money. That's more money than I'm sure most of us or probably any of us can comprehend. But I'd like to tear that figure apart a little bit and I hope shed some light on what the true facts really are. During that same year, we seen the farm debt, the total farm debt of this country increase by $16.1 billion. 16.1. In addition, we've seen $1.9 billion worth of FHA loans. That totals $18 billion. If you figure a 9% interest on that increased debt, you have to add another $1.6 billion. That leaves us with a total of $19.6 billion out of a total of $21.5 billion that we really didn't have to spend. How much good did inflation do us? Now, if we can, let's take another look at that same figure, $21.5 billion. If you look at net farm assets at that same time, we're given from USDA a figure of $608 billion. A little simple division, if I'm correct, gives us a rate of return on our money of 2.967%, and that's after we donated our time and our management. Now, I don't know about the rest of you, but I think I'm worth a little more than that, and I think my operation ought to be. Again, I asked you, because it seems that in the past few years, and especially since 1972, we have decided that we probably can't make money farming, but at least we can make money on that farm that we own. Well, granted, Farmland in that year did go up 9%. And if you had a very big operation, that amounted to a lot of dollars of net increase. But let's look at general inflation. Look, let's look at the inflation of the prices that we had to pay on the farm. If we look at those, they went up 9.3%. So we lost again. Preparing a cash flow sheet is a chore and a headache. But I think if you look at those figures and think about them a bit, I don't think you can blame your banker when he wants you to fill one out. A startling aspect of cash flow, I think, is shown in this example that we used at the main convention, on the main convention floor Wednesday night. I'm going to turn this on and go through it. This is an example that we didn't put together. It was put together for a government study. Now, can everyone see that, or do we need to turn some lights down? A 
Okay, I'm going to have to look at this while I go over it. But this is an average farm in Nebraska, and we can look down over the figures here. In the first column, you'll find the investments for land, machinery, improvements, and livestock. The interest rate there that you see is the common interest rate in that area. We have a place in there for your interest. This is just so, and we do have some copies of this that we'll pass out at some time, I think, where you can figure this out for your own operation. Continuing on, then finance years is simply the years that these parts of your farming operation are intended to be paid off in. And I think they're pretty realistic. Now, in the lower part of this chart, you will find the columns show what your average first return, your principal payment will be. In the second column, you will find what your total interest will be. And then in the daily column, mark daily, you will find the total of the first two divided by 365. In this example, you will find that every day when you as a young farmer or old farmer or any farmer got up, you had to have $376.82 on a total operation worth $832,906 to get out of bed. I think that's pretty shocking. That's Nebraska. We'll move on to our second example. Here is an Iowa farm. Again, this is corn and hogs. The setup is exactly similar. You'll notice that the total investment here is $847,558. The interest rate and depreciation time is exactly the same. And you'll find here that the figure is almost the same per day, $368.77. This is by no means a very large farm. It is an average farm. I know of many instances where we went over this in meetings where a lot of young farmers sat down and put their own sheet like this together and come up with figures double this. So it's not unusual. I think we can turn the lights back on. We got it have them off again in a minute, but I hate talking in the dark. So far, Bill, the score is lights to Bill nothing. <laughs> okay. Okay, from the dark side of the room. I guess in looking over that, maybe I have painted a dark picture, but we're going to try to shed some light and improve that. <laughs> and in doing that, I'm going to talk about the new program that is called the Procurement Department was brought into effect I would about a month ago. I won't be exact. But it's a total program of procurement. I won't say modeled after the industry's procurement divisions, but I will say that the professional help that we have hired recently has certainly helped us toward building this plan. This plan sets out 
looking for young farmers who we are talking directly to tonight. We are asking for one young farmer who we have entitled an area supervisor to cover two counties. And I may be going about this in reverse order, but what we've done here is taken these are all county blocks, and we simply put, I'm going to put both of them on. We have a breakdown that goes two county, basically, then eight county, and then statewide. It is the responsibility of the two county man the area supervisor, in time, we're not operational on, that, on the whole program at this time. We have used the people that we have in this position already to get people to attend the convention, to work on the certificate of support program, and to encourage sign up of new members. But in time, we hope to expand this program to include the sign-up and procurement of all the products we handle. The rest of the lines that you will see on here simply represent a management system. I do think they do bear some significance because if you will notice, you have a direct line of command. When you have a problem, your area supervisor is there. He, in turn, will work through the area coordinator, who, in turn, will work with the state supervisor. Many of you may be asking how this affects our regional coordinator program. In many cases, we hope that it can fit right down across this program and that these people in time can be used as an additional helping link in that chain. This system is set up to provide a staff man in every two counties across the agricultural producing area of this country. We have to admit some things about our organization up to this point, and one of them is that we haven't been able to staff in all areas as much as we'd like to. We feel this will allow us to put staff in areas where we previously couldn't. In addition, the benefits we feel will be more contacts per dollar, and let me explain that. We all, as farmers, understand efficiency. We've been taught it since we started farming, and we know that it's a must. It's no different in an organization. When we have staff spread out over large areas, covering large areas, sometimes more than a state, it's not uncommon to encounter six to 800 miles per week driven. At 50 miles an hour, that's 12 to 15 hours of a man's productive week being spent as a professional chauffeur. If a man is within two counties of his home, he can spend a higher proportion of his time making contacts and doing the organization its best good. In addition, motel costs can be kept, and I think we're all here at this time uh, know quite a bit about what motel rates have done recently. We feel an advantage to this man is that he can drive on a producer's farm and talk to him about every commodity that that farmer produces. In the past, we may have from time to time, and we hope it didn't happen, but it sometimes did, 
a cattle representative drive on the farm in the morning, a hog representative come around in the noon, around noon, and maybe the grain man come around that evening. And about that time, the farmer figures, well, it's a pretty good three-ring circus. Now, I think we can cut that down. And I think the logic behind this is that although we are, will never be able to be knowledgeable enough to handle the entire marketing of all products, we should be knowledgeable enough to procure them if we have farmers who are knowledgeable enough to produce more than one commodity. In addition, an advantage this staff man will have over our present system is that he will be able to use his personal respect in his community in making contacts. When we have to send the staff man three or four states from his home, that respect that he has built in that community at home is of no value to him. We feel that this can be a big asset to him. The biggest advantage that I can see and that we all know is a must is complete, a more complete service to our members. We all have encountered problems. The marketing of agricultural commodities is not simple. It does take professional expertise. It does take, in sometimes, patience. But we know we have to do it. This complication does require service. To keep a satisfied customer, of course, you have to service your clientele. Another aspect of this, strictly from a management standpoint, is that many of you know that in the past, we probably have had a turnover in staff above average. Paying people on an incentive basis allows you to pay the people that achieve the most for what they do. If an area is not as well, if the potential is not as great, of course, the payment cannot be as great, and we all know that. But I hope that each of you that can will seriously consider helping the procurement department and become an area supervisor. I think it will be a very rewarding experience for you, and in addition, be, can become a substantial part of your income. We have been working on this program now, like I say, for about a month or six weeks. We have, at present, I think, somewhere near 350 counties covered. We do have a long way to go, and we have to ask your help. That, in a nutshell, is the Procurement Department program. Thank you. It would be pure folly if we introduced a new program and didn't give you some instructions or some aids to carry that out. And Bob Arndt has uh, some information here that he wants to run over very briefly with you on procedures and aids in your new assignments. Okay, thank you, Devon. Well, the uh, field staff uh, people, please pass out the booklets that I have along the walls here. Do it as quickly as you possibly can. Please turn the tape over to side number two.